What's up, everybody? Uh, just wanted to make a little bit video about Halloween and should believers celebrate Halloween and other holidays as well, but particularly Halloween in this instance. I was thinking about making a video earlier than this, but uh, God just led me to do it now. Uh, so this will be coming out right when everyone's going out to trick or treat. Um, or right before so maybe this will change your mind about what you're doing if you're going out and participating in this holiday and I'm not going to get into uh, the history of Halloween and all that but uh, I'll just see where God leads this I'm, I'm going to read through some scripture and we're going to start here in Revelation chapter 2 and to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, The one who has the sharp two-edged sword, sword is the word of God, says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold firmly to my name, and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, Antipas my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have some there who, told, who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. And then the next church. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, The Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and feet like burnished bronze, says this, I know your deeds, and your love, and faith, and service, and perseverance, and that your deeds of late are greater than at first. But I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bond servants astray so they commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And we're, what we're focusing on right now is the eating things sacrificed to idols. Eating things sacrificed to idols prophetically in these scriptures. Try not to get distracted. There's a... Uh, a lot of screaming going on right now that wasn't going on when I when I started, but a lot of yelling and screaming. But eating things sacrificed to idols. This goes back to the Israelites and what we see in Numbers, I believe, chapter twenty-five with Balak and Balaam, and the Israelites. Part, they went in parts hook with uh, the people of Midian they put parts hook in the sacrifice of Baal with the Midianites they were eating things sacrificed to idols even though they weren't really oh well they did worship the Bible does say that they worshipped but they weren't cert they weren't truly serving Baal. But they were partaking in the celebration. And in the same way. So eating meat sacrificed to idols. Eating things sacrificed to idols. I talk about this in my seven churches Bible study. Revelation 2 and 3 as well. But um, it's partaking in the ways of the world. Partaking in the things of this world. The same, listening to the same music, watching the same movies as everybody in this world. Per participating in the same pagan holidays. Halloween, Christmas, Easter. And people might think Christmas and Easter, oh, that's worshiping Jesus, but it's actually not. Many people are deceived about that. It's not Jesus' birthday. 
It's believed to be Nimrod's birthday, the Antichrist. And that's where it comes from. But uh, today we're focusing on Halloween. Should Christians celebrate Halloween or should anybody celebrate Halloween? See, Halloween is a celebration of the dead. It's about being someone you're not, being fake. Dressing up and pretending to be evil and a part of evil. It's all about evil and wickedness. Of course, it's toned down. The Bible says the serpent in Genesis uh, 3, 1, 3 verse 1, I believe, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. Satan is slick. He's subtle. And so he makes things that are wicked seem okay. Makes it seem okay to do what's wrong. Because it's all fun and games, right? But we're called to be set apart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read through a couple scriptures. We're called to be set apart and not a part of this world or the ways of it. We read in 1 Peter 2, 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own pos possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's called us out of darkness into light. And that's our job. We are his representatives. We are par a part of his body. We're not supposed to partake in any type of darkness, any type of wickedness. We're supposed to be shining his light, not dwelling in darkness. And we read in We read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be, be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Abstain, abstain from all appearance of evil. And some other translations don't, uh, some other translations read it different because the word for uh, appearance is the Hebrew word eidos, or the Greek word eidos, 1491. And the definition is. Uh, Appearance, fashion, shape, sight, or form. Any form of evil, we're to abstain from all forms of evil. All appearance of evil. We shouldn't be partaking in anything not of God. That includes the music we listen to. That includes the movies we watch. And that includes the holidays we celebrate. See, there's a lot of believers that are caught up in these holidays. But we're called to be set apart and serve God. A lot of believers are caught up in Halloween and spend so much time focusing on Halloween, decorating, buying, and the same with uh, Christmas, decorating, buying, buying stuff. Buying presents, or in that case, but in the case of Halloween, buying uh, candy, buying uh, costumes. Usually dressing up is something not of God. And we shouldn't be partaking in any of this stuff. As believers, we shouldn't be participating in any of this. 
We read in 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God will live forever. We need to be doing God's will in everything. He calls us to be set apart. See, the word, the Hebrew word for holy is kodesh, which means set apart. Set apart from the world and the ways of the world, the things of the world. Set apart and special to God. We're, as we read in, as we read in uh, Second Peter, in First uh, Peter chapter two, we're uh, a royal, pe a chosen people, a royal, royal priesthood. We're to be set apart, set apart, special for God, abiding in Him, following Him. And his ways, not the ways of the world. The Bible says a whole world lies in the hands of the wicked one. Satan has dominion here. Not ultimate dominion. God is in control of everything. But he has given Satan reign here to, to rule this current world until the kingdom of God comes. Until... Until Jesus comes, until the judgment comes. Satan has given reign here to be able to tempt people, to be able to battle us. And our battle against them makes us, makes us stronger. Give me a second. The trials and tribulations that we go through make us stronger. The temptations that we face make us stronger in faith. We read in John, actually, let me go over to Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world. See, we're not to be conformed to this world, to be participating in the ways of the world with everybody else. That's eating meat sacrificed to idols. Because all this, because Satan is the God of this world currently until God takes his dominion away but he has control of all the music all the movies all the holidays and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. We read in James 1 verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. We're to be set apart from the world and the ways of the world. And I just accidentally closed one of all. Uh... Here we go. James 4.4. 4. 
you adulteresses? Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. If we want to be friends of the world participating, if we want the, everybody in the world to like us and be cool and be in their cliques and, and be popular in the world and participate in all this stuff, listen to the same music, watch the same movies, participate in the same holidays. What does the Bible say? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We're to be set apart, holy to God. This is important. And the reason why I read Revelation 2 in the beginning of this, because this is two of the most major things that God has against the church. The sexual immorality, and we know that's got to be up there as a top one, along with eating meat sac sacrificed to idols. They're both there together. Eating meat sacrificed to idols and sexual immorality. We all know what sexual immorality is. And that comes in all forms. Whether it's something you're watching, lust of the heart, or fornication. But eating meat sacrificed to idols is participating in the world and the ways of the world. Watching the same movies, listening to the same music, participating in the same holidays. Where is your focus? That's what we need to ask ourselves. Where is our focus? Because our focus needs to be on God. We read in John 15, verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this the world hates you. And this is what it's supposed to be. The world is supposed to hate us. We're not supposed to be loved by the world or love the world we're supposed to be set apart and different and this is why you know a lot of the people of God are isolated a lot of the true people of God are isolated for setting themselves setting themselves apart and following God in his ways people think we're going too far people think we're in a cult People think we're overdoing it, too zealous for God. But no, God calls us to be holy, set apart to Him, away from the world and the things of it. Where are your priorities? Ask yourself, where are your priorities? Are you focusing on the holidays of this world, the ways of this world, the music of this world, the movies of this world? Or are you focused on God and His Word? We need to be focused on God and His Word, the Holy Bible. We're close to the end. We're close. And would you be ready if you're celebrating Halloween? If you're celebrating Halloween tonight? What kind of look would you have on your face if Jesus showed up, if he came on the clouds and you're celebrating Halloween? Forget this world and the things of it. Drop it. Forget it. Even if you think you're going to disappoint your kids, forget this. Forget Halloween. Drop it. Don't do it. I mean, I have my members of my own household that are uh, out trick-or-treating. Out in costumes right now, trick-or-treating. And there's going to be a Halloween party here at the house tonight. And I probably won't be here. Probably be walking somewhere. I don't even have my car fixed yet. Probably be walking somewhere. Or just chilling outside. I don't want to be a part of any of this. We're supposed to be set apart. And I don't care if my family thinks I'm weird or 
thinks I'm crazy for the different stuff I talk about, for the way I, uh, how fervent I am for the word of God, for the stuff I talk about regarding the gang stalking. I know, I know my family thinks I'm crazy. I know people think I'm crazy. Maybe even some of you guys. But it's all real and we're living in the last days. And what do we expect? As I said earlier, the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. The Bible says all, the whole world lies in the hands of the wicked one. Meaning he has, has control of the governments. He has control of the military. So it's no surprise that he would have control of planes flying, flying over top. That he would have control of trains riding by every time I do a video. Because there aren't that many trains that come by here. But it's uh, almost every video recently is there's been a train come by. But uh, let's be set apart, brothers and sisters. And my true brothers and sisters in the faith, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, if you have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, like I said earlier, Kodesh is holy. Ha means the. HaKodesh is the. Or the Holy Spirit, Ruach. If you have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit in you, we have power over the enemy. We have power over unclean spirits. We have the ability to cast out and command unclean spirits to leave people, to... Sorry, I just got distracted. To uh, to leave people, to leave groups of people. We have power, and I spoke about this in a song video. We have power over the unclean spirits to, uh, to, to force them to leave certain, certain cities, certain towns, certain areas, certain people. We have power to command them to not perform any... We have power to command that no black magic or witchcraft will be, com be performed by certain individuals, by certain groups of people, by, by certain, in certain places, in certain towns, in certain cities, or even states. We have power through the Holy Spirit to tread on the enemy. We have power over serpents and scorpions. All power of the enemy through the Holy Spirit because it's God that's in us. God lives un in us through the Holy Spirit. And if we have His Spirit, we have power over this. So let's use this power. We all know Halloween is a, a day of wickedness. We all know that human sacrifice is a real thing. And a lot of that's... I mean, I prayed against it. And I ask you guys to pray against it too. We know, But we know the enemy is planning on likely planning on performing many sacrifices tonight. But we have power over the enemy. We have power over the unclean spirits. So let's pray against this stuff. Let's pray against this wickedness. Let's pray against any... I ask anybody to watch... Anybody watching this... Any, any of my any of my true brothers and sisters watching this to uh to uh take advantage of the power that you have take advantage of the Holy Spirit in you to do God's will take advantage of of our prayers some only come out through prayer and fasting Let's take advantage of what we can do. Because this is a battle. This is a war that we're in. It's a spiritual war. And it's only won through the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, through our faith, through the Word of God. That's our weapon. That's our weapon of warfare, the, the, the sword. That's the, the sword of the Spirit. It's the Word of God. And the Word of God gives us authority 
to cast out demons, to cast out unclean spirits from certain individuals, from certain groups of individuals, from certain places. We have this power. So let's use it. This is our real war. Paul, Paul said our battle is not against flesh and, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. So let's fight this war. We're in a battle. We're in a war. Let's fight it. Through the word of God and through prayer. And through the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So I just ask you guys to be in prayer with me today. As we're going into the evening of Halloween. I ask you guys to be in prayer with me. Against all witchcraft that's going on tonight. Against all black magic that's going on tonight. Against all works of the enemy that's going on tonight. Against all human sacrifices being attempted tonight. Let's pray against this stuff. Let's command against this stuff. Through the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. There's power in the blood. If we have the Holy Spirit, we have power to do this. And it can be done either way. Through prayer or through the Holy Spirit in us. And I, I do both ways. You know, um, I, I command certain things and I pray for certain things. But uh, let's do this. We're in a war. And let's fight it. So at the end of the day, this whole world is a battle of good versus evil. Choose which side you're going to be on. And the only way to be on the real side, the true side, the good side, is through faith in Jesus Christ. It's the only way to receive the Holy Spirit. It's the only way to eternal life. Because all of us are sinners. God requires perfection in order to enter His kingdom. But all of us are sinners. None of us are perfect. So we can't earn our way to heaven. But Jesus was perfect. He lived a perfect life. Committed no sin. It's through faith in Him and what He did on the cross that we can receive His perfection. We receive His righteousness. Eternal life. We have our sins wiped away and receive eternal life through faith in Him because we can't earn it on our own. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. Give your life to Jesus, he'll give you the Holy Spirit and you have this power as well. And it's not about the power. It's about being saved and having a relationship with the living God. But the Holy Spirit is God. That's the Spirit of God. And if God lives in you, we're temples. Our bodies are temples. If God lives in you, then you have power to tread on the enemy. You have power over unclean spirits, demons. So pray with me, brothers and sisters. Pray with me. Command with me. Let's use our authority in the name of Jesus. Let's use our authority in His realm. We're living in the last days. Let's be ready. Let's overcome. Jesus said, pray always that you're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before him. So let's pray that we're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before him. Let's serve him with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our body, all our soul. Let's shine his light to the world. The light is obedience to him, keeping his commandments. That's how we're set apart, by keeping his commandments and keeping ourselves away from the things and the ways of this world. So let's do that. Let's separate ourselves from this world and the ways of it. We're to be holy to God and follow Him and keep His commandments. Let's shine His light, show His love. So light shines in the darkness and love triumphs over hate and good triumphs over evil. Choose which side you're going to be on. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.